Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel. Thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Glossuta Original Senator Ratropont. You can see this platinum limited edition of 100 pieces on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos. Please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen. That's the card in the upper right hand corner to see our full sales listing for this watch with accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this 100 piece Senator Ratropont. Now on my wrist, six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, you can see a watch that was one of the stars for Glossuda Original at Basel World 2007. However, it took an extra year to complete the engineering on the caliber 9901 movement, so functional examples weren't displayed and delivered until a year later in 2008, but it was worth the wait. At 42 millimeters across the platinum case, the watch is large, but not oversized. It has very impressive mass, thanks to the depth of the lugs, the size of the bezel, the depth of the case, and the broad scope of the platinum component of the display case back. You really feel this watch on the wrist. However, it's not excessive lug to lug at 49 millimeters. It does have rather short and tightly downturned lugs, such that I believe you could wear this watch with security and proportion on a wrist down to as small as 15 centimeters. Once again, for reference, my wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference. Now, there are two non-standard features on this watch with with respect to the strap and buckle, so I want to call them out. The strap is a Camille Fournay brand new piece made in Paris. Camille Fournay is an OEM supplier to brands like Cheshire Le Coult, so this is the highest grade. This is what you'll find on a factory product. But the original Glossuda original strap that shipped with this watch is black and features conforming end pieces that fill the gap between the lugs. While it looks very nicely integrated, it also causes that strap to flare. So if you're going to wear this watch on a wrist that's the size of mine, 16 centimeters or smaller, you want to keep this strap or a strap like it with straight spring bars and you don't want to restore the original strap with its conforming end pieces that will flare out and fight your wrist. Now the other non-standard component is a factory Glossuta original double deployant twin trigger actuated steel folding buckle. Now this is an expensive accessory, but it replaces an original platinum pin buckle that shipped with the watch. At the time of delivery, the original owner preferred the deployant clasp, which does make the watch more secure on the wrist. But again, truth in advertising, the watch originally shipped with a platinum pin buckle much smaller. So in terms of value, it's pretty much a wash, but this was an addition made at the point of purchase. So. Having explained a few variations in our example, let me show you what's germane to the type. The case is beautifully polished and has a fascinating combination of character lines and broad spans of curved platinum. So there's a little bit of a sense of a fluid mass here, almost like metal still in its liquid form, and that's most evident in the lugs, which are beautifully sculpted. They tumble home from the inside to the outside, but then they also curve down beautifully, and each one has a very, very subtle bevel. I'm trying to capture that. I think this angle captures it best, but there's a little bit of a bevel that tumbles from the tops of the lugs off to the sides, and there's a step of the bezel that provides a little bit of a character line to harden the masculine aspect of the watch, giving it a sort of hard-nosed, sharply defined counterpoint to the more sensuous fluid mass of the case. You'll also note that all of the pushers are a vintage style oval cross section and the crown features an inset black onyx cabochon. The crown is also discreet in size and understated making the watch and its case the star of the show. Now, the bezel flanks a dial that is made of solid silver. You can see it has a dark anthracite coating and quite a good deal of color. It's a more cheerful and upbeat high horology rendition by the folks in Saxony. And you can see, in addition to that beautiful anthracite base, there are stylized lacquered Roman numerals splashes of red, as well as color, with silver in the countersunken sub-registers and blue hands tracing their registers. Beautifully done, it's incredibly sharp. It also features gorgeous spade-style hands. Realistically, it's a spade-style hour hand and an assegai-style minute hand. Uncommon, gorgeous, thoughtful. Again, it just makes this watch feel more unique, along with the panorama datum, the large date, that's a signature of many watches hailing from Saxony. The watch feels German, but it's a more upbeat, light-hearted German rendition of a timepiece. You'll also note that the watch, with its 
split second chronograph, well, press the register. Now I have stopped the split second hand. Uh, you'll note that there are different counterweights for each hand, one featuring a diamond form, one featuring the Glossuta Original Company logo. Now you can use this chronograph to time two concurrent events, for instance, two cars around a racetrack, two runners around a track and field course, concurrent events, and then as you find the splits between them, you can simply resume timing both until the next opportunity to split the time between them, such as the next passing of the start-finish line occurs. Now, the watch does feature a quick set for the date. It's actuated from the mid position of the crown, so there's no separate pusher adjuster for changing the date. You do the quick set from the crown, and you hack the watch using the crown. The watch features stop seconds, so when you pull the crown out, you stop the balance, you halt the seconds hand, and you can synchronize this watch to a reference time. Now, let me focus on the double column wheel architecture of the movement. Now the column wheel underneath my thumb is the primary column wheel. You'll see as I start and I stop the watch, the horns of the levers jump into and out of the column wheel. They actuate a lateral clutch, which in this instance is fully jeweled. Very impressive. Lateral clutches often use bushings, not pivot jewels. This is a very upscale way of building one. You'll also notice black polish on top of the chronograph driving wheel, which is driven off the fourth wheel of the movement. And then for the escape wheel, likewise, a black polished cap, black polish on the swan's neck regulator, atop the hand engraved balance cock, and two different types of screws, polished screw heads, represent screws that are used for tuning and adjusting the movement in the chronograph, and then blued screws are used for assembly, for fixing structural components into place. You can see there's a beautiful and broad perlage across the base plate, and an even and deeply grained, well, glossuta stripes, or stripen, across the bridges, because we're not in Geneva, so they're not Geneva Waves or Cote de Genève. Both of the column wheels, and you'll note the retropont, or split seconds, col column wheel in action as I start and stop the split seconds hand, but both of the column wheels are black polished on their crenellated towers as well as the screws within. It's a manual wind caliber that beats weight 4 hertz or 28,800 vibrations per hour and it has a 44 hour power reserve when fully wound so you'll want to wind it on a daily basis. Now you can see the chronograph is halted. The last entertaining interaction you'll have in the sequence of the chronograph is resetting, in which case we actuate the column wheel, the levers, and the recentering hammers at center. Now we've recentered our chronograph and we're ready to start anew. You can see and you can purchase this Glossuta Original Senator Ratrapont on our website.